Welcome back. Well, a brand new NFL season is finally here, and the first game of the year kicked off on Thursday. The Buffalo Bills will be playing the defending champs, the LA Rams, in SoCal, but tomorrow the teams will play their first games of the regular season. Now, this past offseason was filled with blockbuster trades, major free agent movement, experts saying that for the first time in a long time, there are at least 10 teams who legitimately have a great shot at winning a championship. So here to preview the upcoming season is Eric Mitchell, it's so great to see you. Thanks so much for being here, Eric. Thanks for having me, Natasha. I have to tell you, yeah, coming in talking about football after having what we've had in college football today is crazy because we had Texas almost upset the number one Alabama. We've had like, several teams get beat. I mean, Notre Dame, who was just in that huge game with Ohio State that we talked about just a week ago, lost to Marshall today. I mean, it's it's upset city. And then we go, we have NFL. We already had it upset. The Rams lost to the Bills on Thursday. And now we have football tomorrow, and I think I'm not alone. I think I'm joined by most of the country. We're ready for kickoff tomorrow. I, I think so. You know, Eric, Mercury is in retrograde. Um, it has been an upsetting last couple of years, so anything could happen, right? Um, and, Full and stadiums <laughs> and lots of people ready for some football. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't know. If, even yesterday watching Friday Night Lights here in Texas for some high school football, I'm telling you, it's in the air. People just want sports and oh, all yeah. to be together again. Oh, I feel you. And, you know, tomorrow football, fans are going to be watching their teams kick off the season of course the first game was played Buffalo dominating LA so how are our reigning champs doing and are they no longer posing a threat to win the title again I'm not going to say that after one week that would be unfair to the Rams <laughs> and Aaron Donald because I just watched him work out with the rock and I'm like any guy who can make the rock look tired I'm never going to talk bad about his team <laughs> they look it was just a lot of things going on obviously week one you can't panic too much I know there's some teams that are already in the hot seat there's just a lot of drama going into week one. I think one of the biggest games that everyone's talking about is tomorrow night, Sunday night game, being the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Tampa Bay Bucks here in Dallas. The whole, it's the drama behind the scenes that everyone's talking about. Tom Brady coming back, retired, mm -hmm. unretired, came back. He's coming in here with a lot of personal drama in his 45 years of age with there's a whole lot of tabloids talking about it. Well, you're not used to seeing that with Tom. There's always yeah. other things where people are focused on his age. His coach is new, kind of knew everything. He did. He barely played this preseason. And the Cowboys are coming in with Dak and the fresh team. Yes, they've had their line banged up, but the Cowboys are fired up to kind of take revenge over what Tom did to them last year to kick off the season. I mean, we just have so many cool ones, and I'm just because – we're talking at Chicago, but give some love. The Bears take the 49ers tomorrow. It's kind of the first game everybody's seeing. Uh, and I, I have good outlook for the Bears this season. Justin Fields looks amazing. And they're taking on a Niner team that's kind of had quarterback controversy. But I think that game, and then you have the Cleveland Browns taking on the Panthers. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, there's a lot of, because Baker Mayfield left, went to the Panthers. And, you, of course, Deshaun Watson <laughs> that the Browns have had to deal with. What a mess, but a lot of Baker wants to take that revenge on. So week one has a lot of November vibes in September, so it's exciting. Yeah, and I, I'm glad you brought up Tom Brady. We'll talk about him in just a moment. Um, and also The Rock. I, Eric, I don't know if you've ever seen a video of The Rock working out. It literally consists of him staring at himself in the mirror, doing a curl and going, focus, focus. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I mean, he has like chains on him, right? Next level, just, next level. Yeah, and then you see a cheat day and you're like, okay, I just want to be able to try to eat like that. And I'm like, you eat like that in one day, I yeah. die. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Okay, <laughs> let me ask you. So last season, the Cincinnati Bengals shocked the world, right, by going to the Super Bowl. Which team are you expecting to play spoiler this year? Ooh, that's tough. I think the Bengals are going to win the AFC East. I said that yesterday uh, here on News Nation, and I'm standing by that. I think they're an amazing team. I also believe that you're going to be looking at teams like the Bills and Shockers coming from, I think will come from the Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots are going to be these teams to watch. They're the young upcomers that are hot to trot out of the AFC that you're going to kind of see that new feel with new teams and i really like the dolphins this year and i just saw jake paul and rick ross down in miami put million dollar bets on the dolphins to win which by the way pays out 36 million dollars if you just happen to have a million laying around and you want to take a chance i i saw that but there's some sleepers there and then you always have everybody's favorites here in the nfc the bears could shock everybody i think they're still about a year or two away justin looks great but i think there's some stuff there uh, i don't think the commanders are anything to really write home about but you always have the cowboys they're there the niners the rams of course they're just an amazing team the seahawks are in a rebuilding year 
the Falcons are done. And the Bucks. Everybody has the Bucks as the favorite, but I think there's just too much drama there, and I don't know how much more Brady can take. He just looks beat down. I don't know. The Bucks don't. The Bucks last year, I was like, oh, they could do it. Now I'm going, there's so many younger teams that could mm. actually pull this off. Okay, I, I want to circle back and talk about Tom Brady quickly. You know, he kind of confused fans, right? Teammates, coaches alike. He announced his retirement before the Super Bowl. He came out of retirement a few weeks later. And he's won seven Super Bowls, five Super Bowl MVP awards, three regular season MVP awards. What else do you think he's trying to prove? Tom said on a podcast earlier this week with Jim Gray, he said that he did it because he had unfinished business and felt he left his team, his teammates kind of with unfinished business. And I'm going over the stats you're saying exactly at the same time going, how are you saying that you have unfinished business? Dude, you're, you're the GOAT. You're the greatest of all time. Great Bay, Bay Area product. Proud to know where he went to school. I mean, everybody brags about playing Tom Brady. Brady's done, but apparently he doesn't feel that he's done. Yeah. But I think his wife might disagree with him. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I know I'm happily married, and I know you want to keep the wife happy, but Tom Brady's 45. He's explained he has a lot of personal things going off the field. He's got a son playing high school football. He's, I just think he doesn't know when to turn it off, and we saw MJ go through that when he was finishing out his career. Mm -hmm. Wayne Gretzky, the same thing. These guys are just – they love the game, and it's sure. like they don't want to take it out because they have nothing to do. It'll be interesting. You won't have Gronk, who we see having way too much fun doing everything else that Gronk does. So it's just interesting to see Brady go through this. It's like you don't – I wanted him to go out a winner, and I felt that he went out pretty good last season. And this year, I'm kind of afraid of what could happen. Interesting. Eric, so bottom line, if you were his manager, would you recommend go out on top, say goodbye, bow out gracefully? Is, would that be your recommendation to him? I would have had him bow out last season. When he retired, I would have left that off, and I would have done it. I don't know. That was a, It was a debacle. Let's just all face it, right? We all watched that retirement. I would have, I would have been happy with Brady just retiring. And having all this happiness instead of what are we talking about? We're talking about all this tabloid stuff with yeah. Tom. And that's what I don't want him remembered as because he's a great quarterback. I mean, yeah. he's the greatest of all time. And that's not what you're like, oh, guess what? Tom Brady's wife didn't come to him to Dallas to watch the game tomorrow. That's just not what we want to remember Tom about. I hear you. Eric Mitchell, it's so great to talk to you as always. Thanks so much and have a great evening. Thanks, Natasha.